Kelly Byers is remembered as one of those random drivers in NASCAR 08, but from the early to mid 2000s, he was actually a very intriguing prospect. He began go-karting at the age of nine at Sugar River Speedway in Broadhead, Wisconsin. By the age of 12, he began competing in national karting events and won several regional titles and two national championships. By 2002, he began racing in super late models, where at Dell's Motor Speedway, he finished fifth in points and won the track's Rookie of the Year award. Along with being a champion in racing, he was also a state champion wrestler in high school. It wasn't until he moved up to ASA where he really made a name for himself nationally, winning the series championship and catching the attention of the Wood Brothers. Even though he made one ARCA and Truck Series start before winning his ASA championship, the Wood Brothers had an actual development plan. After finishing fourth for the Wood Brothers in Kenny Strader at Talladega and Arca, they decided it would be best to have him run a few truck series races. In seven starts, he only scored one top 10, with the highlights being this insane crash at Daytona and this random run in with Ted Musgrave. And then Ted obviously is so upset about it, he's going to run up here and just drive into the door of the 21 to Which show it, his displeasure. It was a racing thing. I mean, Kelly Byers had nothing, to, his truck got loose. Ted Musgrave was just on the outside of him. It, it was obviously not intended. That would be Kelly Byers' last start in the truck series, but his career was just getting started. As the 2007 season progressed, he moved up to the Nationwide Series after John Wood withdrew from competition due to illness. In only his second career start at Kentucky, he started 26 and ended up finishing in the top 10, as well as leading 5 laps. And from this point on, he was the 47's full-time driver until 2008. This was where his ranking as a prospect was on the rise because over those next two years, while he would get involved in quite a few accidents, he still showcased his potential, especially towards the end of 2008. The fall Dover race sums it up perfectly. He's fast enough to start on the outside of the front row, but by lap 70, he's already DNF. After scoring six top tens and a 13th place points finish, Byers unfortunately could not secure sponsorship for 2009. Instead of running full time, he ran for a plethora of teams from Braun Racing to Kevin Harvick Incorporated, back with JTG Doherty, and even a starting park entry. In just 14 starts, he scored two top fives and three top tens. When you compare it to his one top five and six top tens a season ago running all 35, you now see why he was viewed as a bright prospect. And fortunately for Byers, one of the top teams took notice. Now after running a partial schedule this season that has consisted of 12 races for five different teams, Byers has found some security for 2010. Junior Motorsports has announced that Byers has been added to its driver lineup for next season. Dale and I have been friends for the you know the last few years ever since I've really come to NASCAR and um, we relate to a lot of things you know in the same way and um, Dale you know has seen my ability you know on and off the track the last couple of years and, and what I've done with the limited you know opportunities we've had this year to race and uh, um, he believes it's a, a situation that we could uh, just plug me in and uh, not miss a beat. Why do you think Junior Motorsports chose him? I think it's because he's young. They, they like bringing along young talent. But I think they've also seen that he knows how to go fast. Uh, he's a racer. Uh, he really wants to do this. I think he's proved that to a lot of people. He was willing to get in cars and, and do what he had to do to keep his name out there in front of people. And I think that's uh, one of the reasons this race team went after him. Young talent that has a lot of talent and uh, isn't afraid to push the pedal. And just like that, Byers is thrusted into arguably the best team in the Nationwide Series and without question, the most popular. He was going to be taking over the 88, in which Brad Keselowski went on a tear with in 2009 before moving up to the Cup Series. Definitely not the easiest act to follow up, but at Junior Motorsports, they have set a new standard. This was going to be Byers' first major opportunity driving full-time for a marquee team. With his driving talents and potential, combined with Tony Urey Jr. and Sr.'s crew chiefing guidance, you felt like the 88 was was still going to be a contender entering the 2010 season. Not only did they not reach the levels that they did with Brad Kozlowski, but they were so off the mark. The first race of the season at Fontana didn't get off to the best start as he started in 32nd. Wait, Fontana? 
Yeah, that's right. Kelly Byers didn't make his first start of the 2010 Nationwide Series season until Fontana because of a sponsorship obligation from Hellman's requiring Dale Earnhardt Jr. to run the 88 car in the 2010 season opener at Daytona. Well, what about the 7? Well, Danica Patrick's running the 7 with her GoDaddy.com sponsorship forcing Byers to sit out the opening weekend. Byers got in the car for Fontana and promptly brought home a 7th place finish. Not bad considering he missed the first race, but how would he follow it up at Las Vegas? Crash and turn 1 and 2. Into the wall. Kelly Byers in the 88 from Junior Motorsports. Hey, okay? You had see a, the rotor, brake rotor coming apart there. Had a great run last week when he was at Five, California. Four, nine, we broke something in the right front or flew up or something. Went straight in the wall. Said he felt like maybe something broke. Kind of looked like a tire going down, but it's hard to say right there. Yeah, that didn't look like he was loose or nothing like that. Just went straight up. Very unfortunate, but it's still early in the season. Lots of time still. At Bristol, he made it up for a moment, qualifying in third, but unfortunately he failed to lead any laps and failed to score a top 10 finish, crossing the line 12. Heading into the fifth race of the season at Nashville, well, Byers fourth race, it felt like this could be the weekend everything would come together for him based on his history at the track. It was anything but. Actually, he was a non-factor, starting in 24th and only being able to finish 14th. And at Phoenix, it wouldn't get that much better. A 16th place starting position followed up by a 17th place finish, with the only race highlight being on pit road. Car right around the corner here. Right around the corner. We just got taken out by the coming out of the pit box. So Kelly Byers gets into him and, uh, and Byers gets damaged in this deal too. This accident turned out to be Kelly Byers last moment driving for Junior Motorsports because four days later he got booted from the team six races into the season and when asked about it Dale Earnhardt Jr. suggested that chemistry had a lot to do with his firing. It just wasn't working out. There was no chemistry. It was on the verge of going horribly wrong. I know that Byers was not really enjoying it. I feel like where we are with our company, it's real delicate financially, and you have to make sure that you make the right calls, and you have to do them in a timely manner. We were definitely internally going down the wrong path. Knowing what we knew, and Tony Sr. and Tony Jr. getting to work with Kelly very closely over the last couple of weeks, we got to know what we needed to know to make the decision we made. So from the sounds of it, no one was feeling each other at all from the very beginning, and I would like to think that the whole Daytona sponsorship deal had a little something to do with that, but for the most part, it sounds like the Yuris and buyers just didn't see eye to eye. This final quote from Dale Earnhardt Jr. is also telling. We're looking for the next Brad Keselowski, the next Jeff Gordon, whoever you want to compare him to, we're looking for that next guy, and we've got to get him in the race car. After working with Byers for a few races, Junior and the Yuris determined that he simply wasn't that guy. Once he was released, his career in NASCAR sort of fizzled out. He did end up making some start and park cup series runs in 2012, but the best opportunity he had gotten since being released by Junior Motorsports was making two starts for Joe Gibbs Racing, scoring a best finish of 8th at Chicagoland. But he hasn't raced in NASCAR since 2012, and today, Kelly Byers runs his own team, KBR Performance. Here's Ty Majeski, now a Truck Series Championship contender, winning in his truck. Kelly Byers wasn't the biggest prospect out there, but once he signed with Junior Motorsports, the lights were simply a little too bright. While he was able to put together solid finishes and great equipment at times, it was never sustained. And while his deal at Junior Motorsports wasn't the most fair, not only was nobody getting along, he didn't perform. And with his career fizzling out less than three years later, I have to give Kelly Byers the label as a NASCAR bust. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.